All right. Yep. Awesome. So let's uh, so let's get to uh, Max from uh, from Counter Strike here. So um, I chose the Charger. The and Charger. Uh, All right. yeah, this is this you you up. you, you look at you look at this card and you're like, oh, what in the world? Uh, Karita only inner spear card. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, it it plays like a heavy at 80 tons, but it's medium speed. That's fantastic, and has three mm -hmm. armor six. Uh, structure that that is very durable you look at the three armor six structure uh, comparatively to that man of war prime from the clans that's a three seven and you're paying five for it uh, in this case you also get a jump uh, go looking at you risky combat jump um, missile one is, is is the bane of every deck you, you're just gonna throw missiles at the stockpile you never know what a missile is gonna be and you're already playing assembly and politics you add munitions and tactics as well it's a four for resource uh, deck, that's probably uh, your missile's only probably going to be doing damage on a one or a two. Um, that two politics buyout can be awkward, um, but because Karita is usually going to be an AT deck, uh, but there are politics cards that are worthwhile in Karita, um, especially later on. Uh, you looking at their high command card uh, or Takashi's Legacy? Those are both politic buyout cards uh, from later sets, and they both give a nice damage boost. Uh, it's a good chassis for Krita pilots to be on because it's medium speed. It's only going to be hunted uh, absent a con uh, Vlad or a uh, single combat because it's Krita. They can't stop it uh, by fast units and it's really resilient. I give it a six for Krita decks. Uh, I, I think it's tying you down too much with the politics buyout. If you want to make the most of the missile, you've got to put the munitions in there. Otherwise, it's it's a wasted two-thirds of a point of damage every, every now and again. I think the jump's quite nice and the 3-6 chassis is great. Mm -hmm. um, but I believe that when they uh, reproduced this in Commander's Edition, it went to A and T, which made it much, much better. Uh, so I, I wouldn't play with this version. I would consider the AT version uh, from Commander's Edition. Um, but I think for, for four cost for Karita, maybe maybe there are other choices. Maybe I prefer my Grand Dragon uh, at a two six three overheat two plus one, um, as as an example in the medium speed bracket, or some of the other cards that are available um, that are just as durable. Uh, I know the Maricure on Warrior is uh, a one eight, so similar amounts of survivability, should we say just in different quantities. Uh, I'm not as fan of this as much as Gustav is. I'd give it a four or a five. Gustav, we were tossing a six at it. Yeah, I like it at a six. Awesome. All right, so coming up, we have the uh, the Cyclops. Uh, one, of, one of my choices, uh, again with Crusade, uh, sorry, uh, again with uh, Counter-Strike, Everyone's looking at this and thinking, what's going on here? It's a three with a 2L buyout, which generally was, was not the flavor of the month. Uh, and arguably until Arsenal came along where there are lots of L&M uh, buyout mechs, that this actually probably came or became a, a much better, better unit. Um, it's durable at a 2.6. Uh, it hasn't got a great deal of damage with two, but that overheat of four plus three can really help. Uh, if we go back to the Vicious Kick that we mentioned earlier, this is a candidate for Vicious Kick. Uh, and it fills that three-cost slot, which I don't know what it is. It's the clan and Innisfere. There seems to be a bit of a question mark in that three-resource three, three, three resource bracket. Um, there's nothing solid on either side. I think in the right deck, this could be quite useful. If you go with a red line pilot from one of the later expansions, it can get to the Magic 7. Um, why it's got a red line pilot, I'm not sure, because it's running an AC-20, and you thought maybe it should have been Alpha Strike, but yeah. that's the way it is. And it's a big, stonking 90-tonner, which for some of the other cards later in the game that start to look more at tonnage, like the Vicious Kick, um, they have benefits. Uh, I don't think Gustav's going to rate it as high as that, but we'll see. No, I, I'm definitely not going to rate it that high. It is subject to a hunt down. Um, it's a slow unit for three. Um, if I was playing an inner sphere and I was looking for three drops, uh, I would much more uh, willing, especially in Diner, Steiner and Davian, to be playing my Wolfhound 
uh, for a three drop without that uh, pesky logistics buyout. Um, mm -hmm. So that's that's where I'd be playing. I, I'd probably be, that 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 is my go-to three drop uh, for the inner sphere. Um, and if, if you're I'm not playing, playing Steiner and Davian. Yeah, that there's there's problems out there. Probably a Spectre at three drop. I like the Spectre at uh, a zero six two uh, with jump, risky combat jump, and ECM. So that's where I play my uh, I play four Spectres over four Cyclopses. But later on, those ninety tons make a difference. And with the red line pilot, you can get to seven. Uh, I still would rather have fast units at three. And uh, moving on, we uh, back into Clan with a Dasher B. Yeah, the Dasher B's got a lot of cool things going on. Of course, uh, it costs twice the uh, the value of Mr. Spanky. It's got a tactics buyout rather than uh, assembly, so you're paying four plus two T. It has ECM uh, at an O2. That's pretty great because it allows it to survive a rocky gorge, and all the the fast little dashers that attack with it can get the plus one armor as well. It has AP, so it's dealing plus one. Uh, damage to any other target but a mech. So it's basically a four if you're hunting a stockpile or hunting a resource. Uh, and of course it does dash. Um, so it'll come right back out. Um, plays really well with elemental points. Uh, so for five cost uh, T and L, you can get a dashing uh, seven damage uh, against a resource between the actually eight because the elemental points all have AP as well. So you can be doing eight damage against a resource. So even that field construction sites can be scrapped uh, to a dasher B and a elemental point. So I rank it a five. It can see play, uh, just not as much as Mr. Spanky, its little brother. And what's that AP stand for? You know? I don't know. Is it anti-personnel or anti-personnel? Anti like personnel. I, I think it's anti-personnel because you're thinking it's, about flamethrowers and you're thinking about machine guns is what uh, you're thinking about when you think AP. Okay. I'm just saying I was, that's where my mind went to, but if it does it to a site as well, then I was like, okay, wait, that doesn't work. But maybe command, command cards that are people, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could see that. All right. Mark, what do you think about uh, that should be here? It's a lot to pay for something that could die very quickly. Mm. Yeah. Uh, if this hits the table then it's going to die to a dasher prime which is two cost and and for me that's better i've got more, i've got better value out of my two resources than you have out of your four mm. yeah i can see where gus is going with with killing uh command cards and, and other things like that i think the rating of five is probably about fair you won't see it these days because it costs too much for, for what it does Dasher Prime has, has, has got the throne in that respect. Uh, it might make an appearance in the order of Invading Clans deck, if only because of the T buyout. Most of them run T with probably logistics. Um, so it, 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 it has a use there, which is why a, a, f a five is probably a fair, fair score for it. All right, coming up, we're go, going heavy this time, Daishi B. Yeah, this is probably Mark's the most baby. affordable, <laughs> the most affordable of the Daishis. It's Omni the first, first Daishi that you actually stood a chance of getting on the mm. table. Mm. And, and that was under extreme circumstances. Uh, it's a 12, 3A, 3L, uh, 4 armor, 11 structure, 7 damage with an overheat of 6 to itself and of an additional 4. Yeah, it's, it's the cheap one. Uh, it is the prodigal son in that respect. However, if you can build it right, this is the Daishi that you build first. And then there's a card in Mech Warrior called Omni Mech Pod Case that you can use to turn this little thing into Widowmaker or any of the other Daishis that you particularly want. Um, and that card, that Omni Mech uh, Pod uh cash is uh it lets you replace any any mech with a different version of that same mech right yes. so you're just using it to upgrade yeah you, you pay the difference in price <laughs> by scrapping cards but arguably this is how you can get a turn three widow maker on the table um it's a hell of a combo um but it's doable um, but i thought you know in normal play it's not gonna hit the table ever uh, ever you know, it's it's too slow to get there. Twelve cost. By the time you've built that, the game's probably over. Uh, if you build a deck around it, then it stands a chance. But that deck is is 
never going to win a tournament, not unless you get incredibly good luck. It's one of those okay. decks that's a, uh, reliable, or you can pull pull the combo off about a third of the time. So, if I if it was normal, it's a two, only because it's the cheap one and you can get it on the table. If you build a deck around it and exploit that, you might you might say it's a six, only because you can use it. Yeah, you could pay six with double overtime and have that down. Uh, yeah. Turn two, turn three, pretty consistently if you have it in your hand with the field construction side. So Mark, Mark's deck allows you to have that Daishi down, uh, but it's just not consistent enough to see uh, competitive play. But for the gimmick, it, it really is a high moment. If you're, a, if you're a Timmy out there that wants to have that Daishi in play, it, it, it's the first one to hit the, the table uh, in constructed play. So that's, it feels good to have a Daishi. I, I, still, I, I give it a, I'd get it a two or one. It's binder fodder otherwise. Got it. Well, it still makes me cry that kind of the, uh, the bigger mechs aren't as viable in the game. You can't see them as much because, uh, you know, even I, I feel, I wish the mechanics were that it, it made sense that you could get one or two, you know, on the deck in a game. At least that would be thematic, but you know, even that's a stretch. All right. Uh, moving on. We got the Fenris B. This is the backbone of the Invading Clans Wolf decks. Uh, it is a five cost, one assembly buyout. So even if you don't have assembly, you're still getting a fast mech at a one, six, four chassis. Um, it combos greatly with other uh, three damage attack fast mechs, looking at you, little, little Mr. Spanky. Um, it's the magic seven to kill, uh, six structure, one armor. This is why Fenris chassis is so popular and better than the Dragonfly, cheaper than the Lanners. Uh, it's, a, it's a nine for me. It's a fantastic card. Uh, it's a it's a common slot, so you can build you can get these cards really cheap, um, and it's uh, extremely durable. It's got that uh, four attack, powerful. Still sees play in competitive decks. It's a nine, and that's uh, cousin to his uh, Fenris Prime, which is kind of a key key card in the game as as a benchmark clan. What do you think, Mark? I think nine is a bit generous, personally. Uh, if you look at later parts of the game, it, it got replaced with the Phantom, Phantom A. Uh, I think at this point in time, it's a good, strong, fast mech. Five is, is a little on the high side, but it, as it doesn't dash. Um, but at that, that point in time, it, it, was, it was good. It was solid. The four is, is definitely a bonus. I'd probably put it at about an eight, to be honest. Uh, and, and nowadays, you, you tend not to see it. Um, it, the, the phantoms with the dash ability are much more preferable than paying paying for, for, for this and, and having it sit there. Gotcha. So decent enough at the time, but superseded. And then moving on back into the assault on the range. So we have Gladiator D. Pretty card. I like the art on this one. It's a rare. Pretty sure. It is, is it a rare or uncommon? I think it's uncommon uh, okay. at 11 cost. So it, it, it's, it's not a rare. It has a huge base attack at nine, uh, very mm -hmm. resilient at 310. And you're going to see a 95 ton mech jump. Uh, so you get you can get initiative off that assault mech. So yeah. uh, those 95 tonners, uh, they've got they've got ups. Uh, 11 cost buyout uh, for a nine base attack. Uh, it's it's a lot to pay. Uh, but uh, right now, if, if you were to play it in, in Counter-Strike, it, it'd be way too slow. Uh, but if you're to play it in an uh, ICF Merchant Cast deck, uh, an Invading Clan deck, um, it's, it's a big mech deck uh, kind of card because it has no tactics, no munitions, no assembly buyouts. Uh, it's a great top end for Ghost Bearer Invading Clans. If you can play an unopposed on that, that's 18 damage. That's what you're looking at to, to end a game uh, or an inside job. Uh, that's what you're looking at to end a game. It has no long range option if blocked, which is kind of sad. Um, but uh, if we're if we're looking at it in in Counter Strike, it, you're you're never going to get it out. It's probably a two. But if you're looking at invading clans, and we're in the land of ICF and Merchant Cast, uh, it's up there at a six. Mark. Yeah, pretty much agree. Eleven costs for nine damage isn't bad especially when you compare it to some of the other options in, in that, that region, like the Masakaris. No asset buyout is great. Jump's a nice bonus. Um, but these days, way too slow, unless you, you've got that resource engine to, to support throwing it out on, on turn three or four, uh, which is doable. Um, I'm not sure if I'd pick it over one or two other options, just because the others might have something like long range that you know just push a few through. And let's let's face it, with nine damage, 
most things die on seven or eight. So where does the extra go? If there's a second mech, it's going to bounce off the armor. Whereas a couple of long range just to punch through to the stockpile and kill the mech would be absolutely ideal. Mm. So six is pretty fair in my opinion. And what were those other those better options? Uh, ooh, off the top of my head, I'd have to go and have a look. Um, if you take Ghost Bear out, then then there are others in there. You think about later expansions, things like crossbows, mm. uh, things like Mad Cats, which are um, medium speed or moderate speed. You can get a, a, a 299 or a 297. Uh, for, well, the, the Mad Cat B is 9, 1A, 1M, and a 299. Uh, 297 that'll kill a resource it doesn't have the long range options but then if i'm killing the resource i don't need them so it is what it is um i i i worry a little about slow these days so, I agree. yeah speaking of slow the next one's another one of my choices but i just love the art uh, and i really like the king crab um it's Are got we talking uh, of the original art or the upgraded art here the upgrade the upgraded art uh, but I do, I do like the King Crab as a mech. Uh, it unfortunately has Alpha Strike rather than Overheat, and Alpha Strike uh, cost-wise is prohibitive because uh, an Alpha Struck mech, as everybody knows that's played this game, uh, is uh, flipped over. Uh, it can be attacked by all speeds of units, and it does no damage back. It is a terrible situation to have an Alpha Struck mech. It's it's. And, you know, you're an empty uh, auto cannon is no better than a club, I think is one of the quotes out there. Uh, it's just a terrible situation to have an, uh, an alpha strike mech. But later on, uh, there are cards that allow you to alpha strike for free without that depletion cost. And uh, this particular unit, uh, for seven for a heavy, we're dealing in the 100 ton land for the inner sphere, uh, extremely resilient. Uh, you, you see that a lot with the inner sphere heavies. Um, where they got three uh, armor, 11 structure. It's going to take a whole lot of oof to take this one out. Uh, and it does the magic number seven. With a sharpshooter, uh, we're up to nine, um, but we're dealing with uh, four munitions, four logistics, two tactics buyout. Um, four munitions and four logistics buyout is prohibitive uh, when you're thinking about an AT deck. Uh, adding another munitions in there is, is rough. But you can ramp into this with advanced manufacturing techniques or assault mech specialists. Um, I like this card um, in the right deck. It's uh, a really fun card to play with, very resilient. Um, I give it a five, uh, and that's partly because the art in the replacement version for Comstar is fantastic. Plus one for the art, hey? <laughs> I, I look at the original card and it just looks like a frog swimming away in an algae covered pool and, and not very palatable at all. And then when you look at the CE version and you've got Franz Vohinkel's death monster flying at you at high speed with lasers bouncing all over the place, you get a sense of, of what this guy is capable of. It's, it's got to be plus one, if not plus two, purely because of the art on this card. And any card that that guy de designed or drew for Battletech is awesome. Uh, yeah, it, all, all, the, all the positives Gus said about, you know, uh, three armor, 11 structure. It alphas, which is a bit of a pain, but then what do you expect with twin AC-20s? Screams for a pilot, which, which probably means it's an LMT deck, which is doable. Uh, and and you're going to build you're going to build your resource base around that in order to pop those out at seven. It's playable, um, but you know you 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 really got to support it in order to get it on the table. You're going to give it a five, or you're going to give it a four without the art bonus. Four and a half then. Okay. Good compromise. All right, moving on. We got a Ryokan C. Yeah, another great frustration with, with Counter-Strike. Uh, and, and in the set notes here, I've, I've got a Ryokan C and I've got a Ryokan Prime. And the difference between them is that the C is Ghost Bear. They are identical. They are two yeah, seven that's sixes and that's it. And you just think, well, why not do something with it? Make it a little different. Or even make the Prime have overheat cause it, or, or, or give it an option. I know... Th heat sinks and efficiency and all that kind of stuff but the prime's basically a laser boat uh and 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 the c has got a large laser in ac10 give the c uh, an alpha or something or other having 12 7 cost 1a mechs 
is never going to happen in a deck. Uh, most people, if they do do it, will, will use six of the prime because of the flexibility of being able to use the other clan. And I just think it was a really, really missed opportunity. If you look at the prime or the C, if you're playing Ghost Bear, 276, it's good in draft. If you build around it with clan Big Mac deck, then it's playable, it's usable. Dennis Brooks had it in his deck as an example. But I just think the C is such a waste of, a, of, of, of cardboard in that respect. Do something different with it. Give us another option. Just a missed opportunity. It's a four. Maybe this, a seven if you went to draft. Did this even happen much? I mean, I caught this too, just these identical mechs. Are there other places where they're just truly identical cards with one? I mean, and this is identical with one slightly more restrictive than the other, but... I think there are a number of similarities. The Thor Prime and A, I think the one has got a big overheat option. Mm. Something like four plus one, which is horrible. Right. Um, I think there might be another couple somewhere else, but I'd have to go looking for them. But this this is the one that sticks in my mind. Sure. Yeah, the Thors and the Lokis are just unplayable. They're, they're just unplayable cards. This, this is a terrible card design um, because it's restrictive. It came after the, the Ryokan Prime. It's restrictive. It does nothing for you. If I'm playing Ghost Bear, there's no reason why I shouldn't just be playing the Prime as well. Nobody's going to have 12 of these in the deck. It's a two. Uh, it was uh, a waste of space uh, in the card design for this set. It's a All low right. point of Counter-Strike. Yeah. All right. Well, let's bounce to another, another good one. Uh, so we have the Spider 7M. Came out in the uh, Counter Strike as well as uh, in the is that a Crusade. No, it's uh, Crusade Commander's revised? Edition, Commander's revised edition version. Revised? Yeah, okay. yeah, it's fantastic in Commander's Edition. Go ahead, Mark. Uh, I picked it purely for those reasons. Uh, when you when you look at the Counter Strike version, it's reasonably anemic in the respect that it's one one M one L, which are not favoured mod uh, asset buyers at all. Uh, much as it's got jump and a free deploy, it's a zero three one. It can't kill a dasher it's going to die horribly. Then when they redid it in, in uh, Commander's Edition, it went to uh, two cost, which is playable, second turn, with a 1L buyout, okay. You still got your jump, you still got your free deploy, um, but you're now a, a, a zero three two, And that extra point makes a world of difference. Mm. Um, at, at the start, it, it, it's cannon fodder. Uh, with Commander's Edition, it's definitely a very useful mech uh, and one to, to consider with uh, all those L-based decks and, and, and Cyclops in them, uh, by the way. Um, so, you know, Counter-Strike, uh, Counter not good. Commander's Edition version, that's the one to get hold of. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a one or a two in my book, the, the Counter-Strike version. You're never going to play that spider. Uh, it's never going to see uh, any play, even in fun play. It's, it's a worthless worthless unit. But uh, the Spider revised uh, 03 2 for 2 in a free deploy uh, in logistics based deck, refill in your hand with hidden reserves. Uh, very, very, very good. I'd, I'd rank it a 7, 8, maybe 7 or 8 uh, in, in uh, post Commander's Edition deck construction. And it's too bad because I, I love this mech on the tabletop for what it does. It's, uh, you know, to have an 8 12 8 you know, jumping around, you know, for scouting recon. And I wish they had yeah. kind of taken that, taken that theme and just added, you know, you don't need a lot of hit with it, but just add it, you know, put, I don't know, put dash and, uh, and the free construction on it, you know, and then just kind of load up on those, on those cool little abilities that it can do. So. Travis, we were talking about the tabletop. I, I think about this, uh, the spider uh, SDR seven M uh, saw a lot of play in that, that other game that we were talking about the, the computer game that I played with quite a few uh, folks from the uh, alpha strike and command circuit, uh, which were um, boards for battle tech back in the day, including cab hammer. And this spider was the, uh, the leg beast. It moved so fast in that game. Uh, the, the battle tech uh, 3025, uh, game that it would cause leg for your opponent and you could get behind them and strafe them with those uh, with those lasers in the back. It just is a really fun mech to play with on, on the uh, computer game. But in the in the card game, sadly, it just really is lackluster at the Commander's Edition version. Yeah, I had an awesome... The, not Command, Counter-Strike version. Commander's Edition yeah, is definitely yeah. much better. Yeah, I had an awesome tabletop experience with it where we did... Uh, uh, it was a... Uh, I was an under... 
underweighted, uh, basically it was a scout mission, scout, and it was in a, in a cavern, you know, map. And, uh, and so I think, you know, the, uh, the defending lands outweighed mine by like twice. And then I basically just kind of hung my three mechs back to kind of distract and kind of pull his units uh, and to try to attack them. And I just sent the spider in and it just bounced. And he tried to attack it with a catapult at first with no luck. He could never hit it. And then he tried to bring another mech or two in. And then actually by the end, he had three mechs trying to get me to stop me from getting out of there. And it didn't, I just bounced around until finally I got an opening and, and got out. Yeah, it was a, it was a super fun mech for, for what I was playing. But uh, talk about other other niche mech, the uh, the fan favorite. You love it or hate it. We have the the urban mech, the uh, UMR sixty three. It's a Ooh, trash cool can. Cool art. Cool art. I like the art on this one. The egg um, with legs. Yeah. Um, the... Okay. My final choice uh, exemplifies what Michael said in, in previous casts about uh, 05 and 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 two attack. For, for nothing for free on the points. It's a 0 1 A, uh, 1 4 armor structure, 2 damage with jump. Uh, and, it, and it can't block unless it's guarding. Uh, and, and you look at that and you think it's total cannon fodder, and it probably is. However, somebody made a great deck out of it that won a tournament. Which, what was it? All right, which, let's talk about the deck. Let's awesome. talk about the deck, yeah. But yeah. I think my, my point here is that you look at that and, and you discount it, and, and you shouldn't, because there's always realms of creativity. There's always realms of coming up with new ways of dealing with things and doing with things. So, so the deck is listed. Uh, it's in the, it'll be in the notes. If, if you want to ping it up there, that's great. But basically, it runs 30 very, very cheap cost Lao units. Bulldog, Saladin, Vindicator, Jackal, and both versions of the Urban Mech. And it does not run any A, M, L, P, or T at all. It runs six specialized project teams, which are basically uh, a, a zero cost resource, six think tanks, and six war funds. So there's no assemblies. So if you're looking to use up all those cards, having used up all your resources, this is arguably the deck to, to have a look at. And basically, it just swarmed the entire board. Uh, you, you put down Think Tank, you strap it for A, your Urban Mech's a, 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 a zero one a you throw them out. Uh, you put down uh, one of the others, I think the Jackal's got an M buy out. Put that down, throw that out, chuck, 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 keep going, keep going, keep going. And it covers or included th five or six missions because most of these mechs had all got jump. And literally, it was the epitome of a very, very early free deploy swarm at the time. That sounds fun and unexpected. And I don't think it—I don't think it runs any rares. That's the other thing, Mark. When you when you talk about these deck constructions, this is this is a game where you can build extremely competitive decks without a single rare card in your deck. So as far as cost efficiency, and you're thinking like the, the pocket of a 13, 14 year old kid back in 97, right. um, you could build a deck like this and be competitive on a tournament scene for pennies. Yeah. Risky, I think is uncommon. Accidental collision is uncommon. And I think most of the rest of them are, uh, uh, sorry, those two are uncommon. I think most of the rest are, are common in themselves. Uh, so yeah, really, really cheap. I, I think in a lot of cases the the limit is is actually your imagination and and how you can make something perform much better than it is by synergy with other cards. Um, you know, the the idea here is a, a thirty mech swarm, um, and and the using the think tanks and specialized project team, which I think if I remember rightly, and I'm just going to check it. But I believe with Specialized Project Team, it's tapped for a resource and then it's uh, scrap to draw a card. Yes, so that's correct. You, you pay nothing, you tap it for a resource, then you scrap it and draw another card. Uh, and, and you can't resource hunt this deck because it just doesn't have resources on the table at all. <laughs> yep. Awesome. And, and, and 15 units in front of you. Yeah. Yeah. And with final push, it actually can, uh, can push that damage. All those little two, uh, those little two damage units, uh, it's filled with two damage units. All of those can get too long range off of the final push. Isn't that right, Mark? Yeah. 
Yeah, as long as they've got two to start with. It's and everything can go straight through. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I'm definitely looking forward to when we when we kind of start putting some uh, some Twitch stream um, or just uh, uh, you know some recorded games in general. We can play kind of some fun decks like this and see kind of see how they see how they play out for people to enjoy. All right. We uh, so that concludes Counter Strike for us.